Dr. Spencer Wells is the director of the Genographic Project, a five-year effort to collect genetic information to better understand how early humans populated the planet. The $40 million project is funded by the National Geographic Society, IBM, and the Waite Family Foundation. Dr. Wells is a telegenic, self-styled Indiana Jones figure who has spent his career hopscotching the world in search of genetic artifacts, which makes it hard not to refer to him as, well, Indiana Jeans. <laughs> Indiana Jeans. <laughs> I haven't heard that either. <laughs> While it is still in its early stages, Dr. Wells says the information gathered has already borne fruit. One of the things we've been looking at actively is, uh, over the last year or so, Africa. What happened in Africa before we started to leave? And what routes did we take when we started to leave? And what about possible back migrations? We're picking up evidence of those perhaps 30,000 years ago or so from the Middle East. Perhaps not surprisingly, these clues are of great interest to scientists outside the field of population genetics. Ian Tattersall is the curator of anthropology at the American Museum of Natural History. We don't know a great deal from the fossil record, the traditional uh, source of information about, uh, the, uh, about human history, not very well documented in terms of the exodus of people from uh, Africa and their spread around the world. So this is a really exciting way of getting a grip on this. Dr. Wells is quick to point out that his research depends a great deal upon the work of scientists from numerous other disciplines. Obviously, this field doesn't operate in isolation, so we as geneticists are able to say uniquely who's related to who. But to make sense of that, we have to place it into the context of the paleontological record, the archaeological record, the linguistic record. No field operating in isolation can answer all of these questions. While the science behind the genographic project is sound, it is not without controversy. Some indigenous groups charge that the project has the whiff of exploitation about it, and others have suggested that the genetic information may undermine long-standing narrative traditions of who they are. Dr. Wells insists these fears are unfounded. The first thing I have to stress is that participation in the project is entirely voluntary, and we're very clear about the possible outcomes when we talk to people about participating, i.e. the science may tell a story which is slightly different from a, an oral tradition, an oral history. But our goal, again, is not to take away their sense of who they are, their culture. It's to synthesize the information. And so we want to add to your sense of who you are and your sense of community. If nothing else, the project may provide many of us with a first tangible sense of how recent our common origins really are. And that, despite all our differences in appearance and culture, we are ultimately tied together. We all ponder the same deep, eternal questions. Again, Ian Tattersall. Because that's what makes humans unique. Only humans really have a self-awareness, an awareness of having a history and of uh, having an origin. And uh, anybody that, that, that shares in this awareness is obviously going to be interested in the results of studies of this kind. And this can only help.